What's up, fellow Lords of Gaming? Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Future Fight. So today I just want to jump in and talk about specifically this. The developer note has arrived. So let's get into this. All right. So what are we talking about with this developer's note and what's in the uh, agenda for us? So <clears throat> let's jump right on it. And that, that way we can figure out where we're going from here. So a number one, uh, nice for them to drop a developer's note um, at this point in the year. It's going to be really important for their Black Friday sales because, you know, obviously, you know, if players don't feel like there's something to invest in, the, the sale numbers are going to be low and they're not going to get the type of, you know, numbers they need to continue to game. And, and let's be honest, you know, Marvel Future Fight is definitely on the smaller end of their um, their 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 earning potential for games that they're currently producing. I would probably say it's like one of the lowest earning games in their portfolio. That's the truth is you're not comparing this to like Marvel Contest of Champions or anything like that. So anyways, let's jump right on it so we can talk about some of this stuff. So first off, this is Marvel Future Fight development team. As we approach the end of November in the year 2023, we would like to send our greetings to our agents through the development team letter. Right. So we are happy and it's amazing that the game has made it to eight year anniversary earlier this year and that the game has been eight years. I've been playing the game for seven out of eight years and i um, surprised that it's still going. So first thing first, let's talk about the new Epic Quest. So they believe that the biggest enjoyment for Mar playing Marvel Future Fight is the opportunity to encounter numerous heroes of the Marvel Universe within the game. They introduce new heroes and they plan to add even more heroes in 2024. Um, in particular, uh, we will introduce a new powerful native tier hero along with new regular heroes through a new epic quest which our agents have been eagerly awaiting for. I don't know who this is. Um, the only person I could think of is like Havoc or, you know, we've been asking for Havoc for forever. Um, I can't think of anybody else. Anyways, although the new epic quest is still in the process, development requires some time until the update. We will do our best. So right off the rip, that kind of information lets us know exactly where we're at with why this is being published and nothing more than um, realistically being pushed there because of, you know, um, it's being pushed because, well, you know, they need to make a Black Friday sales. So uh, typically these epic quests, they, you know, they're supposed to represent a way for you to get a new, more powerful character, right? Um, and typically all of those quest lines basically represent a like a long term investment to the game that you basically pay, play and then you're basically able to get into like the archive of the events and you collect like, you know, rewards and stuff in here. Please tell me <laughs> I still haven't even collected this reward. Wow, that's funny. Um, I guess I hadn't completed some of the events and stuff like you can see like these are long term objective quests that you can come in here and complete. So like mega uniform upgrade ticket. I guess I never played these missions in order to get these items. It's crazy like that. I haven't done these, but it's the truth anyways. And typically with these events, they come in like a quest pack or something like that, that, you know, it's like complete the story mission. And when you complete the story mission, you'll unlock a character. When you complete the research objectives and things like that, you know you'll get additional characters and so forth and so forth right so the evolution of the event is pretty cool in terms of it gives new story elements for you to complete on a daily basis which unlocks you know what you call so the eternals was a really great pack in that regard for this um here goes the problem that i have with some of the uh, the epic quests so like i believe from here we basically had like these epic quests where like century um, wow, I have never even completed this one. That's crazy. Shows you how much like I really looked at playing these events inside of here. Like, but they, these were just annoying in terms of like being able to complete a figure out where flight plan was and then B go in here and play these modes and waste your energy on on a day to day basis for some of these rewards, which just weren't, you know, weren't really worth it. So when I look at some of the characters in here, some of the characters had some pop to them. You know what I mean? Like so Icarus and Thena, these characters definitely had some pop to them in terms of where they were. Um, you go back inside of like Dark Rain and Moonstone and Century definitely has some pop to them. You go back inside like the Galactic Imperative and you can see here, um, sadly for this one, um, it kind of like pan, didn't pan out really well because you had Gladiator, uh, Praetorian, 
and we still have yet to revisit this character at all like he is a tear pack character that was in here the uniform was absolutely amazing the detail and everything that they spent on the character but we've never revisited that character i mean even nova richard Ryder was introduced into here and we never revisited that character um punisher nebula you know phyla veil phyla veil is a character that's inside the game that you know guess what never revisited this character <laughs> like she was introduced as a character inside of here that you basically if you wanted this character um you know you basically had to go into her like to get you want we've never even got another additional uniform for this character um so it's like where they lose out beta ray bill was the only character that was out of here that was revisited and he got his potential transcendence but we end up with all of these characters that have strong potential but they never revisit them there's like a, a schedule like why haven't we revisited nova at any point we you know we had his ultimates tie-in in terms of sam alexander uh but we never revisited gladiator pray Tour. these are characters that we should have revisited um the dark reigns quest line inside here for moonstone um moonstone was a popped off character and she's really really good character um in the game um we need to revisit those characters uh we look at the galactic imperative i think we just looked at that one we looked at the first family inside of here and you had the dooms uh excuse me the doom collection inside here is for ruler of latveria I am actually surprised at how long it has been since we've seen Doom get some shine. I mean, like, for real. So the Fantastic Four are all there, but Victorious and Doom were the new characters that basically were introduced there. And we have never come back to these characters. <laughs> like, it's sad. Um, X-Force, we come back to, <laughs> I think we come back to what you call it so very frequently, Deadpool inside of here, but we just finally received, after the length of time that was there for this character, finally have come back to Strife, and Strife has finally just only received a tier three. I, I, I can't envision how long it's going to be before we actually receive an update to that character again. Like, I mean, Phantom X was introduced inside here and we have still yet to come back to this character. Like, this is the problem that I find with the epic quest and the promise of additional epic quests is because a lot of the characters that typically fall inside the epic quest, we never revisit those characters. I mean, you know, the X-Men was very popular and we knew Jean was gonna be in there and she basically like rules the roost in terms of PVP. Doctor Strange was introduced inside the, uh, the strange universe epic quest and he is a really good character um overall you can't really complain about him in any shape form or way at least in my opinion you know but um it's just one of those things where it's like you know right now he's not being visited heavily so my problem with the epic quest piece is just that when are we going to revisit the epic quest characters revisit those more frequently so that way we have something to basically get out of here because shaper of worlds basically came and i can't tell you the disappointment that was molecule man i mean moonstone was like bar none god but i cannot explain to you the the disappointment that is molecule man go inside the game right now and look at molecule man and see where he sits in the meta he's garbage here moonstone was really good century had his time we still have yet to visit this character i think many players have been wanting to visit um this over the years but we just haven't gotten back to this so in terms of them talking about uh coming back to these characters and making new epic quests it's just not very like popish for me because there doesn't seem to be the um the thought process in terms of how characters are developed over time and when we revisit characters like the epic quest would be more fun if we had reason to return to the epic quest especially knowing that they were going to return to the epic quest characters these things with the collection bonuses and stuff like that they're really good collection bonuses the uh, the objective of obtaining these things though they are asinine like am i going to waste biometrics or excuse me energy points on a daily to basically get uh you know the rewards from here probably not like who really wants to do that uh, especially when you have the landscape of all the other things it's you know it's just bad in terms of my opinion over there so epic quest right 
would love it if they returned and basically instead of introducing a new epic quest basically return to epic quest and do some upgrades to some of those characters that were in the epic quest specifically nova and gladiators uh you know molecule man and century like let's get some updates to those characters coming here so after the august update they was a they were able to hear the opinion of the in-game survey I'm not sure why they had to wait for the in-game survey in August. I think we did a, a survey two years ago where it was clear as hell World Boss was a major update. I've staggered on this, uh, you know, just plenty of times where you jump inside World Boss and I've literally said to players ad nauseum, you know, um, why am I spending gold basically to reroll on character on on World Boss Legends? Because this is the problem with World Boss Legends. We talked about this before. World Boss Ultimate and World Boss Legends right now. So you basically have the ability to come in and play Ultimate, but we have no reason to return to the content that's inside Ultimate. There needs to be something that's made or some kind of rewards balancing that's done, so we have reason to return to Ultimate uh, battle modes, or the shift should be made to collapse all of these uh world bosses that are in ultimate stage into legendary stage and so that way we have those um the legends are really good introductions into the game here goes my problem with the introductions of world boss legends however though and why i'm not so exactly excited about having a new world boss introduced kang the conqueror where is he at inside the meta no where is he at in the meta Mephisto, where is he at in the meta? Infinity Ultron, where is he at in the meta? The only character inside of all of this that's basically somewhere seated, inside, seated in the meta is Jean Grey. The, the dirtiness that was done to these other legendary world bosses is ridiculous. Like Null, Mephisto, Ultron, King, these characters have quite literally fallen off. They've had multiple avenues to revisit King the Conqueror at this point and give him a new uniform, new bonuses. Like we could have got the Victor Timely. We could have got the uh, guy, the He Who Remains. We could have got a whole bunch of updates to King the Conqueror, but we've never touched this content. Null is still a pretty strong character inside the comics, and we've had plenty of reason to return to Null inside the game, but we haven't. Mephisto is another character in that regard. I think he was the first one world boss legend that we had why have we not returned the infinity ultron oh my god the dirty that was done to this character i mean he was never good on arrival he was dead so you don't incentivize players enough to basically jump in here and look at these characters because the way i look at world boss legend is a my ability to play world boss legend is di dictated on my ability to acquire these characters that are the legendary characters if i don't have a reason to play those to play those characters then i don't really want to do this and Two, the next thing that's inside here is the reason why we play World Boss so much is because it's primarily our only means of receiving materials that are going to allow us to elevate other characters to new tiers. So it's not that World Boss is necessarily our favorite mode, it's just the only mode where you've put rewards into the game that makes it worth playing that mode. Um, and even on that regard, the way you set up World Boss doesn't really engender us in any way to push hard higher faster further together because the rewards for stage two are the rewards at the same as stage stage 99 um they're the same overall and to be honest with you they haven't been revamped in forever the stage rewards like these are the boost rewards special reward boost that we're getting you're getting t3 materials and then you're getting like ESO 8s like a the thing that you guys need to do is get rid of this ESO 8 system where it's just stacking up inventory but of course you won't do that um it just is it, it like world boss the rewards need to be beefed up uh in order for us to basically you know uh collect more tier 4 materials and accelerate the rate at which we are collecting tier 4s because that's the current landscape i get it that that you don't want to necessarily do that but you know and then the status of some of these world boss legend type characters um they really need to be beefed up in terms of the characters that we acquired with this game mode 
just my opinion, but you know, whatever. Um, so you can see here, first of all, we will make it easier to acquire the type you want for Titans records from World Boss Legend difficulty. And this way we reduce the stress of acquiring Titans records for agents who mainly clear World Boss Legend, not a problem there. We are also aware that many agents are playing only certain types of world bosses and will pair pair improvements so that agents can choose various bosses based on their needs. This would be absolutely amazing. All of the ultimate characters that are there, I would love to go back and play some of the ultimate world bosses. I just don't have a reason to go back and play some of the ultimate world bosses. It's just the truth. Um, lastly, we are preparing a new world boss legend as well. The new world boss legend will be cleared with a different approach from existing world bosses. And they also talk about reducing the cinematic sequences. Like, I don't know that the cinematic sequences are necessary. I feel bad because they do so much for the cinematic sequences uh, and they're really good cinematic sequences. It's just that there's no reason to, pe to, to, to look at the cinematic sequences when you play the game um, because they reduce time and stuff like that. So it's not really a good thing. Aside from the above, we are also preparing various features and improvements for our agents to enjoy Marvel Future Fight more conveniently. For example, story fragments will be able to be combined into a different number. This will help resolve any imbalances in the quantity of story fragments. Um, so <clears throat> the story fragments is a really good feature that they talk about inside here because um, let me go back over here. So, so for instance, I've literally championed story mode for a while. I think some of the better rewards in the game in terms of player achievement, receiving tier three characters and beyond are with inside of the story mode mission. Uh, basically, you play the story mode and you co you collect these story fragments. The problem is, is that they're so imbalanced in terms of the story um, in terms of you collecting. So for instance, like here, you can see on stage one and five, uh, of these basically for completing these and then for completing the first three of these I've got like 686 fragments from that stage and I've got like 682 from this stage and then you come over here and you're like well stage nine which just has eight two eight three I've only got <laughs> I've only got 98 fragments so it's like completely imbalanced inside of like the overall combination of these but the rewards are really good or the chance at rewards are pretty good like especially with the way they've been peered down for potential enhancement or uh, excuse me type enhancement and then like some of the abilities to get these it's really nice you basically combine the fragments overall and it reduces your number and if you get lucky you get lucky and there's no problems there whatsoever i think it's a really good uh balance of uh you know coming back to daily play and engage they need to do something similar like this with epic quest where i have a reason to go back to epic quest even after the longevity of epic quest because here goes the problem with a lot of mobile gaming in general is that you tend to have like game modes and things like that that are supposed to represent long-term effects for players to work towards but what you end up having is players trying to find ways to just get the quick fix and then we complain after you get the quick fix because you've completed the content so quickly because you've rushed either through cash spending or anything like that and you've rushed to the end and now you have no other content to play but they haven't done anything to make it so that way you have a reason to return to those i don't like the fact that they lay and they're vague about what other improvements they have like you can see as various features and improvements that doesn't say anything to me are you improving my desire or my need to jump back into things like dispatch mission um are you improving my desire to jump into shadowland like shadowland just recently had a buff inside of it so like it was nice but shadowland still kind of boring to play it's just like a tedious game mode for you to complete and get those levels and that's largely the reason why you have like so many of the potential transcendent characters without uniforms or uniform characters without transcendence or tier fouring or tier three inside there um, but have you brought in any reason for me to go back and play those? There's even other game modes like Dispatch Mission uh, I never return to. I never return to Epic Quest. I don't have a reason to return to Heroic Quest. Why have we not added in more characters into the Heroic Quest menu? The Heroic Quest was a great thing on a daily basis to basically tell players how to play things and why to play things and to jump in and navigate them around the game some of those paywalled characters that you guys have guess what instead of them just being mad automatic paywalled and stuff like that after a time they should just drop inside the heroic quest put them inside the heroic quest so that way we have reason to go back in there like how many of the paywalled characters in this game currently do we currently look at and say 
you know what's probably really good is that like if i went inside here and i was to oh, excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me so if i was to go to the store for instance and i was to look at some of the characters that i could purchase from uh the the like the potential transcendence packs or the x-men relay packs whatever you're looking at overall in terms of like hey i want to purchase characters overall i can't remember where the hell it is oh here we go so like i want some of that character acquisition so i need like the exclusive characters inside of here right like i want to basically look at some of these characters and i want to say like hey the available characters inside here this is not the right pack that i'm looking at the exclusive characters list in here needs to be improved or turned around because there's characters the likes of like Sabretooth, emma frost blue dragon iceman like these characters should no longer be in here for for paid put them inside the heroic quest for instance after a t after a time like here we go for like the 30 biometrics daily right and these are the exclusive characters well, guess what? how I feel about these exclusive characters? They're pretty shit overall. Like, for instance, Nick Fury's still sitting in here, and he's a great character, but is Victorious uh, as good as him? Is Killmonger as good as him? Is a lot of these characters in here, Hyperion, and, you know, like, some of these characters should just be removed out of this paywall structure in terms of getting them, and they should just be put into, you know, the heroic quest format because it would be it'd be really good same thing for like the uh the x genes daily right like these characters i mean as much as we've seen magic shit on colossus shit on <laughs> we haven't even seen gambit touch kitty pride was an absolute disappointment docking i mean like why is docking still in here side paywall entry like these characters they're not even meta for a good majority of them so why are they paywalled in terms of exclusivity they should just be removed and put aside the heroic quest so we have reason to go into heroic quest and you can purchase like maybe a top up thing that's going to make it more better to make it better than what it currently is but those are types of improvements that we need to be looking for inside the game is reason for me to return to content that i'm not currently playing i don't even know that i play dimension rift anymore like i know it's an accelerated way of getting you know some of the celestial essence but the means and measures of the rewards in the game overall is what really needs to be improved that's the that's the absolute truth of the thing like you want alliance tournament and alliance conquest i think this is largely the reason why certain players are still playing the game in terms of like whales and stuff like that they love pvp make that a little bit more exciting like world event multiverse invasion these are good modes and stuff and giant boss raid the bottom line is that the the rewards of the game overall on a whole need to be weighted and measured and they need to be revamped because a lot of the things that hold back players from returning to content or playing content on a more regular basis is just that is that the rewards don't mirror up to the effort that's supposed to be put in behind these modes hope you guys enjoyed the video it's a dev note i really don't intend on spending money for the black friday sales i don't think that there's anything of investment that's going to be helpful for me mobile gaming landscape wise um i've produced another video for like black desert online to talk about some of the investments there i think it was last year or the year before where they introduced you know like an ability uh it was like a 399 pack so that way you got like a set amount of crystals every day for the entirety of the year that's really cool i think for the black friday sale they really need to look at something that ties to the um the character growth uh things so like for instance we play we like if you're playing the game fairly frequently i think like something where they tie into like the 28 day check-in the um seven day journeys um the tony stark the tony stark stash or the biometric dailies these are things where they can capitalize on especially like uh, shield special support or special daily growth where you can span these things out for a instead of me having to purchase this twice a year for instance twice a month uh, right now make it so that way you know like it incentivizes players to be like for a hundred bucks or something like that you know because they're basically like 20 bucks a month which is like the pre pass up or whatever make it so that way i want to jump in here and spend like maybe you sell me on 50 60 bucks or something like that to get a pass that basically goes the whole year or like 60 days or so i mean not uh like you know six months or something like that do me a special daily growth or something like that that does the same thing and incentivizes a player to get after those things for like 90 days 60 day uh 180 days or 
uh, 360 days. Do something like that with these so that way I have a reason and incentive. But basically telling me to purchase some of the items and just giving me crystal ups. Yeah, I'm kind of past that. Like, you know, Marvel Future Fight is a eight year old game that definitely needs a reward retool. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you planning on shelling out for the Black Friday sales or are you keeping your money in your pocket? Until next time, guys. Peace.